they'll say, for example, if, uh, if God existed, how come there is so much evil and suffering in the world? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how would we sort of answer that question? Because that sort of ties in to our conceptualizing God Almighty as well as understanding about uh, d predestination. So if you could maybe uh, give some advice about that. <coughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam, wa rasulillah. Just before I answer that question, I just want to touch on something that uh, Sheikh Abdul Basri mentioned. Was that we, in, especially in the West, and you also mentioned about some of the actors um, who've taken their life and so on, and they live this kind of um, this lifestyle of wealth and glamour and so on, but they end their lives in such a such a very sad manner. And it's very important also to realize in that, in that aspect that sometimes there are medical conditions that they're not necessarily related to religion. Of course, religion is, is a very important part of, of life, it's the most important part. But sometimes it's not the religion that is the problem. Sometimes they need the medical care, they need the advice from, from, from the practitioner and from the doctor and, and so on. Um, also, in terms of the physical pain of the body, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that when any of our organs are not functioning properly, then you notice that we feel the pain instantly. So you might find somebody who has a problem with their liver, they might have hepatitis and so on. They immediately know, and this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're the pains that we have when we go and we seek some sort of a treatment for them. But also then you have, like the, like the Sheikh mentions, is, that the, is, the, is the pain of the heart. When the body doesn't know its function, why it is here, what, where am I going? We were traveling here today, we took some wrong turns and we were a bit stressed because we didn't know where we were going. It's a bit like when you're on the, on the path and you don't, know, you don't know where your destination is. Similar to the human being, if he doesn't know his destination, doesn't know where he's going to end up, what's going to happen to him after his death, and these trouble the human being. And this is a very important thing, but alhamdulillah in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, in the deen and Allah al-Islam, very the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. The question that you mentioned, uh, Burn Nabil, about this misconception that a lot of non-Muslims have about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, we have to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells about himself in the Quran, in Allah la yadlimun nasa shay'a. Verily Allah does not do injustice to anybody. And nas here is everybody, non-Muslims and Muslims alone. Sometimes we perceive things uh, to be evil, sometimes we perceive them to, to, to be bad, but in essence they're not bad. Sometimes they're there to wake people up, to guide people back to the right path. And that's what happens when you have a physical ailment. What do you do? You pursue a doctor, you go to someone who's going to help you. But the physical and the, sorry, the spiritual ailments of the heart, then what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to do is trying to take you from that troubled lifestyle and bring you back onto the right path. We have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, in many verses, that don't think that what the dhalim and what they're doing, the oppressors, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to leave them. Verily, He's delaying them until, until an appointed time. And anything that happens, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فِيمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيْعَفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that no musibah, no trial or calamity happens except it's what your hands has put forward. In other words, in the actions that you've done within your limbs, the evil deeds that you do in your life and so on, and the lifestyle that you choose to do. But Allah pardons so much. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another verse at the end of Surah Fatir, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to actually bring us to account to, to all the things that we do, He would not leave anybody on the earth. In other words, you know, because of the injustice that we're doing to ourselves. And also the Prophet used to always make dua at the beginning and used to say at the beginning of his khutbahs, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا We seek refuge in the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of okay. our evil actions. So, we have to understand is that our acts, anything that we do, has a transitive effect. Sometimes we think, well, okay, these people, why the Sheikh mentioned that, okay, they're giving it so far, these people are doing well, but you find that sometimes there's a musibah or a calamity, another part of the Muslim world. But we cannot look at us like as different identity. We are one ummah. So my sins affect you, your sins affect me, and we are all affected by each other. And that's when we're talking about Uhud, and then the, the, how the companions, they, they went against the Prophet ﷺ in that issue, and therefore they suffered a defeat. It's a lesson for us that even when the Prophet ﷺ was there, that they had to suffer a defeat. That's a lesson for us. For from the Sira. Um, so it depends obviously uh, Nabil, who we're talking about in terms of the non-Muslims because Christians for example have a concept that God is all good 
and nothing comes except for good from, from, from God. So when evil happens, they can't explain it. And this, is, this, is, this can be a problem because it all goes back to the concept of, of, of who God is. Um, but we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed the shirk to happen. As he, it's, he, it's his qadr. And we have to be patient upon that what Allah has destined and patience upon his obedience, patience upon abstaining from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to keep away from and also patience on things such as the qadr, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we learn loads of lessons in the Quran. That's what the NBA and all the prophets went through was tribulations and trials. And Allah tells us to go back on the Quran. Quran. Do you not reflect upon the Quran? Reflecting on what? On those stories of the prophets who went through bigger trials than any of us face to give us what? That type of reassurance, that type of tranquility. And how do we respond to those sort of calamities? Yeah. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home.